75 mice over a thousand fruit flies, seeds from plants and even soil designed to mimic the moon. All of them packed inside a Russian satellite that blasted off this week. This is not a science fiction movie. It is a real space mission called Bion M number no. 2 and its goal is to answer one of humanity's biggest questions. Can life survive beyond Earth? Hi, I'm Soumya Pillai and you're watching Pure Science. In this episode, as you might have already guessed, I will take you through Russia's biosatellite Bion M No. 2. The spacecraft is basically a flying biology lab. Its main passengers are 75 lab mice, some regular, others genetically modified to test how certain genes affect resistance to radiation. This distinction is important because outside Earth's protective shield, space is flooded with cosmic rays that can damage a living organism's DNA. So you could think of these mice as stand-ins for future astronauts, taking the first risk so humans don't have to. Then there are fruit flies. Now you might know them as annoying specks hovering around your kitchen, but in science, they are powerhouses. Fruit flies reproduce in just days, which means scientists can watch genetic changes unfold across multiple generations during a single month-long mission. They are the perfect test subjects to see how space changes life over time, fast forward evolution, but in orbit. And the payload doesn't stop there. The satellite also carries plant seeds and lunar dust simulants, which are Earth-made soil that behaves like moon dust. Why? Because when humans eventually build bases on the moon, the local soil will be our construction material. But how will it react to radiation and weightlessness? Will it weaken, harden, become chemically unstable? This mission is designed to give us all those clues. The seeds, meanwhile, are part of a much bigger question. Can we grow food outside Earth? Farming in space is a survival skill we will need before any permanent lunar or Martian settlement. Keeping all this alive and measurable requires carefully engineered systems. Each mouse habitat has automatic feeders, water systems, light that mimic day and night, ventilation fans and cameras watching their every move. Some of the mice even have tiny implanted sensors transmitting their body temperature, heart rate and activity in real time. And here's the kicker. The orbit chosen for this satellite exposes the passengers to nearly 10 times more radiation than earlier missions, which are conditions astronauts would face in deep space journeys to Mars. After about 30 days, the biosatellite will return to Earth, parachuting down in Kazakhstan. That's when the real science begins. Some of the animals will be studied immediately to see how their organs, brains and DNA were affected. Others will be monitored over weeks to measure recovery. Things like memory, motor skills and long-term health will be evaluated. Seeds will be tested for growth and lunar dust will be examined for any chemical changes. Every single data point feeds into one goal, preparing humans for the next era of space exploration. This is the part of a long tradition. The Bion program began in the 1970s when the Soviet Union used biosatellites to study how dogs, monkeys and rodents handled spaceflight. The first modern Bion M flew in 2013. Now, more than a decade later, Bion M number no. 2 is raising the stakes, blending biology with lunar science. It's a small satellite, but it carries big ambitions. This mission matters because these mice, flies, seeds and even grains of simulated moon dust are all stand-ins for us. Before humans set foot on Mars or build homes on the moon, we need to know if life can adapt. Can we shield ourselves from radiation? Can we grow food far from Earth? The answers don't just shape science, they shape the future of humanity in space. Bion M number no. 2 may not carry astronauts, but in many ways, its passengers are pioneers, helping us find out whether Earth's living systems can make a leap to other worlds. Russia is not alone in this kind of work. 
NASA has run countless biological experiments aboard the International Space Station from growing lettuce and wheat to studying how astronauts' immune systems change in orbit. Europe's space agency has flown everything from fish eggs to tiny worms in microgravity, while Japan's Kibo module has hosted experiments on plants and even silkworms. China too has been growing rice and other crops aboard its Tiangong space station. Each of this effort is part of a global puzzle. Before humans can live long term beyond Earth, every spacefaring nation is trying to figure out how animals, plants and microbes adopt. Each of these efforts is part of a global puzzle. Before humans can live long term beyond Earth, Every spacefaring nation is trying to figure out how animals, plants and microbes adapt to life in space. In fact, in the recent Axiom 4 mission, even India sent out a range of biological experiments which were carried out by Indian Air Force Group Captain Shubhanshu Shukla for India. From Russia's mice and fruit flies to NASA's space crops and to India's experiments with microalgae, fenugreek and moong dal in orbit, these missions may look small, but together they are tackling one of the biggest challenges humanity has ever faced. How to live life beyond Earth. And it all begins with the tiniest of passengers, mice, flies, seeds and dust that might just hold the blueprint for life among the stars. This was all from me. I am Soumya Pillai and you were watching Pure Science.